Hello and welcome to Zigwheels. We are here in the United Kingdom where Mahindra has just unveiled their design studio. And here we're getting to see the future of electric vehicles from Mahindra. They had teased that they're going to show us five new offerings from them, which will be coming in the uh, next few years. And we have the details of that. But we've got lots more to show you about what they're planning to do. And starting with the brands, you're going to see the XUV brand, which also is a sub brand now with the electrified variants, which is represented by the car in that corner, which is the E9 but more interestingly they've also got an all new brand which is called the BE and this is derived of course from Bond Electric so all the pure electric vehicles which will not have ICE counterparts so let's get down and see what else is in store At the heart of this new EV wave from Mahindra is of course the platform which is completely scalable, it's modular and we get to see it right here. Now this has been made in partnership with Volkswagen and the key part of that are the batteries because you have lithium ion batteries here, you have NMC battery packs, there's prismatic, there's the blade versions and that is what's going to be storing all the energy for these EVs and that will be scaling from 60 kilowatt hours to 80 kilowatt hours and along with that the really interesting part is you will of course get two-wheel drive and all-wheel drive variants and the interesting bit is that the two-wheel drive variants will actually be rear wheel drive. This is where the power will be sent out to the rear wheel so if you're looking for rear wheel drives there'll be more coming your way in the future and the alternative of course is all wheel drive and I want to switch around here because I want to point out this name to you because this is called the Inglo Iron for India and Glow for Global. So this is also in the way that it is being built. It's a collaboration of sorts and of course the ambitions are global. Now what you see here as a mock-up also shows some of the new advances that are going to happen with the platform. These are semi-active dampers because Mahindra's plan is to offer leading attributes even in terms of the architecture. So ground clearance is going to be over 210 millimeters and along with that they also need these to provide you the right amount of dynamics and comfort at the same time and when it comes to the cockpit you're going to see that there's also a triple display now <laughs> these are three 12.3 inch screens and you're going to see them right from the e8 this is the e9 here but the xuv which is going to be the first one to launch in 2024 you're going to see this layout even in that and that's really interesting they're of course doing a new kind of UI UX for this as well. So this is the architecture, the Inglo, which is advanced in terms of what's, what it's offering you in terms of the core hardware as the EV architecture. And Mahindra say that this is offering you a very high level of performance, very high level of range. And talking about range, this is going to offer you to the tune of 450 kilometers as per the claimed WLTP range. Uh, and that's for the 72 kilowatt hours. So real world, I would think that a minimum of 300 kilometers is what they're aiming for and in terms of power we haven't spoken about that the minimum is about 240 PS for the two-wheel drive version 230 I'm sorry and up to 400 PS for the all-wheel drive variants so definitely you're gonna get some really strong performance as well from the Inglo architecture Now for me, the most interesting bit here, of course, are the XUV derivatives because these are the ones that are coming first. And the one we've got here is the flagship, so to speak. This is the E9. And it is the flagship because it's trying to make a statement in more ways than just being electric. If you come around to the side, you'll see that it's got a coupe-like roof line. Now this is based on the XUV 700. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the E8 as well here. And we're going to talk about it more in detail later. Hopefully, we're going to get to drive it soon. But what I want you to know is while they are based on the 700 and the E8 looks exactly like the 700 in terms of the body style. Actually, if you look at the wheelbase, it's longer even for the E8 and the E9 is longer still. So there have been changes made to the panels here to push the front wheels a little bit further forward to accommodate the new architecture. Like we spoke about the Inglo architecture, that is a new platform underneath, which is why the wheelbase has also changed. What you're going to see with this, of course, is a new kind of style because when you look around to the front the grille has completely changed there's more aggression when it comes to the overall LED DRS treatment it really does uh, you know look a lot more aggressive because of that the grille is of course closed off because this as you know is an EV and if you come around a little bit closer like we were speaking earlier you can see that the new architecture of the inform information the uh, 
infotainment system you can see that that's a mock-up already there of the triple screens and this being a coupe is a two row affair with lots of boot space of course packed in at the rear and if you come around to the rear you'll find that along with this sloping roof line you also get that similar treatment here for the tail lamps which makes it really look very futuristic and striking and speaking to Pratap Bose about this earlier on he said that these cars are again about 90 percent production ready so this is something that you can expect to be seen on Indian roads come April 2025 whereas the E8 is going to be coming December 2024 and that'll be the first of the new EVs from Mahindra. Now coming to the second family which has three offerings coming our way the B family which is encouraging you to be whatever you want to be and this is promising us a lot of excitement just take a look at it this looks particularly racy you might almost think that it's too much of a concept but keep in mind that this 4.3 meter long SUV is coming our way and will be the first of the B family to hit Indian roads which is going to be in October 2025 4.3 meter means is going up against the likes of MG ZS EV which is on sale today and likely other competitors which will be in the market then and if you look at it it does look like it's squared right up against Tata's curve concept <laughs> Before we talk about any other vehicle, what does it feel like to sit inside the BE05? Well, we can find out because they've got a buck here in which it kind of replicates what the cabin is going to look and feel like, kind of, so you get a good sense of the futuristic values that this is going to get. I do like that the dashboard has got this fabric trim on it. It gives it a cool but at the same time slightly calm feeling about it. It looks quite funky in that sense and you can see that the cockpit for the driver really does wrap around uh, him and me in this case and there are lots of elements which are trying to minima minimize the clutter around you. You can see the steering wheel just very basic in terms of buttons. You've got this uh, BE logo just lighting up the center. You've got the shift lever here. Uh, <laughs> looks quite cool in that sense. And of course the controller for the infotainment system here as well. And uh, aside from that you can see there are these lighting elements down here below. Uh, I don't know if you can spot them right now. But you've got similar elements even on the outside on the grill. The ones on the outside have the purpose of communicating to the external environment what the vehicle is kind of up to. It's going to be important in the future. Vehicles are going to be moving around which are completely silent. How fast are they moving? Are they braking? So those kind of things can be communicated using the lights on the grill outside. And as you can see in here, it's got that cockpit feeling. And aside from that, if you look up, there's uh, an accommodation for a panoramic sunroof. I would say this would be a glass room, not a panoramic sunroof. And that will open up the sense of space on the inside. And if you wait around just for a second, I'm going to hop on into the back so we can check out what that would feel like. I'm treating this pretty gingerly because this is a buck which means it's definitely not super solid and we have to be careful about how we're treating it and that's part and parcel of making visits to design studios and to R&D centers you have to treat them with care because these are one-offs in that sense right so I banged the door earlier and that really did hurt me so just shutting it gently yeah so there we go you can see what kind of space is on offer here and just as a reminder i'm five feet six inches so this is how much room i do get right now i do feel like i'm sitting a bit low but uh, i mean in terms of the seat but the height overall feels nice uh, and of course this coupe like roof line does give it a racy feel but with the panoramic sunroof i think this should feel about uh, all right for most journeys but we'll of course have to wait till 2025 to really get a sense of what it feels like and now moving on to the other BEs. Let's take a deep breath because there is a lot to remember, to communicate and uh, to really think about because when we talk about the BEs, we also know that they are getting a lot of technology. We spoke about what's inside the cabin, what's driving it, but aside from that, there's also the safety aspect. Now, these platforms are aiming to be five-star rated. And aside from that, of course, they're getting technology like ADAS Level 2, which packs in the cameras and sensors down here. And that is going to allow the BEs to be able to park themselves autonomously. So that gives it that added edge of convenience and of course coolness. Now what you want to see in terms of design with this larger BE07, the one that we've got here, 
is the similarity in terms of design elements, be it in the way that LEDs are staggered. There's a slight difference in the way they are joined, but it does look very distinctive and definitely the family look carries on over here. And you can see that you also have that slit here on the hood. Does this make it into production is something I'm particularly curious about, but it would create an air curtain, would reduce drag, things like that. And you can see the concept bits like over here, no windscreen wipers right now, right? So there are concept elements to this. There are ORVMs if you look at them. Also those cameras, very futuristic. So gives it that modern look. Now aside from that, when you look at this, it looks pretty cool. And in terms of performance, like we told you, this will go from 230 horsepower to about 400 horsepower in the all-wheel drive version, which means acceleration of zero to 100 in less than six seconds. Five and a half if I'm not wrong, which means it's going to be pretty quick. And Mahindra say that they want to put the sport back into SUV with these electrified vehicles. And finally, the flagship, the BE09 or B09 or B, you know, you know what else it could be called. And I'm just moving over to the other side so you get a sense of scale of this vehicle. It's huge. Can you see how high this deck is? It's got a proper tail jutting out here. <laughs> it's a big SUV. And you know, I was talking about those aero ducts earlier and you can see this is labeled aero channel because there's a similar theme here, even on the tail here of the 09, where you can see there's a little bit of a tunnel going under this deck lid over here. So again, all of this is gonna help with aerodynamics, make it that much more slippery. And this, as a concept, details are sparse, but what this is being called is a Grand Tourer, a four-seater. If you come around to that side, you'll see, take a peek inside. It's got basically two bucket seats at the rear. So this is meant to be a long distance, quick, powerful vehicle, but a comfortable vehicle. And as you come forward to the front, you can continue to see the similar themes that we've seen in the other vehicles, but this is pretty much a concept. You can see everything on the inside. This is uh, looking pretty much in preparation right now but this is going to be the last vehicle that comes our way we do not have a confirmed date as to when it's coming to the market but this is going to be the flagship and the be09 as you can see is <laughs> i just love taking it in i mean it's it's definitely looking very impressive combination of sleek square suv sporty lots of promise here and we can't wait to unlock that when it comes our way